In the 1930s, Germany faced economic hardship and political instability after the First World War. Amidst this turmoil, Adolf Hitler rose to power with promises of prosperity and national pride. As a captivating speaker, Hitler used propaganda to rally support for his Nazi party. He blamed minority groups for Germany's problems, spreading hatred and intolerance. In 1933, Hitler became Chancellor of Germany and quickly consolidated his power. As a result, he silenced opposition and dismantled democratic institutions present in Germany. In the years following Adolf Hitler's rise to power, the Nazi regime embarked on a path of aggressive expansion across Europe. With militaristic fervor, Hitler sought to impose his vision of a greater Germany on neighboring nations. In 1938, Nazi forces annexed Austria, unifying it with the goal of greater Germany. Adolf Hitler forged alliances to strengthen his grip on Europe. One of his key partnerships was with Benito Mussolini's Italy, which was also a fellow fascist regime. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt wanted America to stay neutral in this conflict. He believed in peace and wanted to ensure America's security. Alongside Germany's growing borders, its influence followed, eventually reaching into the eyes of the Japanese. Germany was even able to successfully convince the Japanese to bomb the U.S. at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This surprise attack by the Japanese killed thousands of Americans and destroyed much of the Pacific Fleet. Several U.S. battleships were destroyed in the conflict, and the most prominent one being the USS Arizona. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt called it a date which will live in infamy and declared war on Japan the very next day. With this attack, however, it further united the American people's support for the war effort. This would eventually inspire many Americans to conscript to the U.S. Army and fight on the forefront. During this time of war, several social movements began to propagate. One of the most prominent social movements was the Rosie the Riveter movement. This movement socially promoted the working American woman class from 12 million to 20 million. As men went off to fight, women stepped up to keep the home front running. One of the iconic symbols of this movement was Rosie the Riveter, representing the millions of women who took on jobs in factories and industries previously held by men. These women became welders, machinists, pilots, and more, contributing to the war effort in unprecedented ways. Women of all backgrounds joined the workforce, breaking barriers and challenging traditional gender roles. The movement also saw African American women and women of color demanding equal rights and opportunities. The Rosie the Riveter movement paved a way for the greater gender equality and empowerment in the decades to come. Women's contributions during World War II demonstrated their strength, resilience, and capability. In the annals of history, American contribution to World War II stands as a testament to courage, sacrifice, and unwavering determination. As the fires of war engulfed the world, the United States emerged as a beacon of hope and resolve against the forces of tyranny. On the fateful shores of Normandy, American soldiers faced the crucible of combat in the largest amphibious assault known to humanity. Under withering enemy fire, they pressed forward surmounting seemingly insurmountable odds to establish a foothold in Fortress Europe. From the hedge groves of Normandy to the streets of Paris, American forces fought with unyielding valor, driving back the darkness of the Nazi oppression. 
their indomitable spirit and steadfast resolve forged alliances, restored freedom, and ushered in a new dawn of hope for millions. Across the vast expanse of the Pacific, Mar American marines and sailors clashed with the imperial might of Japan. From the blood-soaked sands of Tarla to the dense jungles of Guadalcanal, they waged a relentless campaign against a determined adversary. Their sacrifices etched in the annals of time paved the way for victory and ensured that the light of freedom would never be extinguished. Back home, on the home front, Americans rallied to the cause, dedicating themselves to the war effort. From the assembly lines of Detroit to the wheat fields of Kansas, they worked tirelessly to supply the war and sustain the fighting forces abroad. As we reflect on the valor and sacrifice of those who served, let us honor their memory and pay tribute to their enduring legacy. For in their courage and sacrifice, we find inspiration to uphold our ideals of liberty, justice, and peace for generations to come. As a young black American in the 1930s, there weren't very many opportunities of any kind. And so when Pearl Harbor took place, there was a thought in my mind the opportunity may soon be here. In 1940, there was less than 100 commercially licensed black American pilots. And as a result, there was a very, very strong resistance for black Americans to become military aviators. So there evolved a an experiment. We will give them a chance. We will try them. But it was called the Tuskegee Experiment. It was an experiment because there was no confidence that black Americans were going to be successful as military aviators. My determination was no matter what, I was going to let nothing stand in the way of me and succeeding as a military aviator. In the beginning, the white units did not want to fly with the black airmen. It was a segregated uh, arrangement, so we flew only, and we were, our organization was all black. There was no integration whatsoever. Our job was not to go out and seek and destroy enemy aircraft, but to make sure enemy aircraft did not destroy the bombers on their missions to the target, on the target, and then returning home. And what happened as a result of the discipline that was shown by the black by the black airmen was that they stayed with the bombers to protect them. The enemy fighters were reluctant to come in and attack the bombers with the escort airplanes so close and ready to destroy them if they did come in that there began to become a record of the bombers that were being protected by the red-tailed Mustangs that were flown by the black Americans were not being destroyed by enemy aircraft. When the war was over, the black group had flown 200 combat missions escorting heavy bombers throughout most of Europe, and they had not lost a single bomber to enemy aircraft. That was a record that never was broken or even achieved by any other escort group throughout all of World War II. And it broke, it, it, it simply destroyed the myth of the incompetency of black airmen. In the midst of World War II, a group of courageous African-American pilots defied prejudice and soared to new heights. They were known as the Tuskegee Airmen, named after the Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama where they were trained. Facing discrimination and segregation, they overcame adversity to become some of the finest aviators in history. Trained as fighter pilots and bomber escorts, they flew countless missions of skill and valor. The development and deployment of the atomic bomb also helped reshape the aspect of warfare. The American sacrifice and valor led to historic victories, bringing an end to Nazi tyranny in Europe and the brutal aggression of Imperial Japan. The triumph of American arms reaffirmed the nation's commitment to freedom, democracy, and the values of which they fought for. In the crucible of war, America emerged victorious, a shining beacon of hope and inspiration for generations to come.